Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. This is my first video in quite a while, so apologies to my subscribers. This is also my first video based on a quarto presentation. It's not fancy by any means, but it's my first step with quarto. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, and the topic is why you should not use the detect course function from the parallel package in R. So if you followed my channel, you may be surprised. I've put up a couple of videos on how to run R code in parallel, and I have used the detect course function. I have also taught it in workshops. I wasn't aware of a better alternative at the time, which exists now. So let's see. The detect course function is quite popular. Um, you see it a lot in the world in many R scripts, and the short version of this video is don't use it. There's a better alternative. So if you do need to set up parallelization, it's recommended to use the available course function from the Parallelly package, which is not part of base R, so you need to install it first. And the long version of this video is why not use the detect course function, which problems may arise if I do use it. So we'll go into details about that. Before we do that, however, I want to give all the credit for this video to Henrik Bengtsson. All the contents um, come from his work. The video is based on a blog article by Henrik Bengtsson. Please avoid detect calls in your R packages. So he focuses on um, developers who create R packages. Um, I think the problems can also arise just in R scripts. But of course, packages, um, you put higher expectations into packages and you trust them. And as a package developer, you have to be extra careful. But even in normal R scripts, um, similar or the same problems can arise. So here are some uh, links to profiles by Henrik Bengtsson. So check out his work. He's done great work um, on enhancing the power of R. Here are some packages that he has written. The list is not comprehensive. There are many more, so check out his profiles. The future package is great. It offers a unified parallel and distributed processing in R for everyone. Um, also, future apply builds up on that. The progress R package I've used before, and there's a video in this channel um, about progress bars, how to do that, and matrix sets we won't talk about today. So this video is mostly about the parallel package um, and how it enhances the parallel package. Right, so which problems may arise when we use the detect course function? And these are the key problems. It may return a missing value, which can be problematic in your code. It may return one, which can be problematic when you want to save one core for the operating system. So we'll see that. Um, then it can also do the opposite. It can return too many cores, which can be problematic. And we'll see some situations of how that can arise. Um, and finally, detect course does not give the number of so-called allowed cores. And we will see in more detail what is meant by that. And we will talk about different situations. This can happen on a shared on a personal computer, on a shared computer, on a shared compute cluster, and also in a Linux container using C groups. So this is the plan for this video. And let's dive right in. So first problem that may arise is that detect course may return a missing value. So when you check out the help page for the detect course function, it says as a return value, it returns an integer, but the um, it could also return an A. So this can, of course, be problematic. Um, when you then use the make cluster function from the parallel package, you may get this error message. Numeric names must be equal to or larger than one, which is not the case for an, an A value. So the solution here, and I will repeat myself in the course of this video, is to use the available course function from the parallel package, which will not return an A, but a valid number. Um, valid integer, at least one. Right. So second problem is it may return one. So nowadays, computers with only one core will be rare, but uh, these cases can happen on laptops, maybe on older laptops, older machines, or if you have some restrictions. Um, so detect calls may return one and then a common usage pattern, which was recommended and which I have used also in the past, is to use detect course minus one to leave one core for the operating system. And this would then return zero, which 
can make subsequent code fail. So um, this is a pattern I have used and it can be problematic. So again, it's better to use the available cause function from the parallel package, which guarantees a minimum of one. And if you want to specify um, to leave one call for the operating system, you can use the omit parameter, omit equals one, and then um, that's better than using minus one because then a minimum of one is guaranteed as a return value. Right, the third problem is detect cores may also return too many cores. So how can that happen? Um, and let me know in the comments if you have been in that situation, if you have experiences with that. Um, I'm self-employed, so, so I don't usually have access to um, larger machines and um, strong infrastructure. So R has a limit in the number of connections it can have open at any time. So for the current R version 422 at the time of shooting this video, the theoretical limit is 125 open connections. The practical limit, however, may be lower because connections may be used elsewhere. So how can this be problematic? Let's assume we have a machine with 192 cores. Wouldn't that be great? And let me know if any of you are in such a situation or if you have even more cores available. So if you then use the detect cores function, you may get an error message, all connections are in use. Um, if you use the make cluster PSOC function from the parallel package, but pass it the detect cores function, you may run into another error message. Um, cannot create 192 parallel PSOC nodes because it exceeds the number of connections that we have available. So these are problems that can come about when detect cores use uh, returns too many cores. So that means that our code may not work on larger model machines. So again, the solution would be to use the available cores function from the parallel package, and you can pass a constraints parameter, for example, const set a constraint to the number of um, possible connections. Note that you can also set an R option for the maximum return value of available cores. So that's detailed here. I don't need to read it all out loud. Um, and you can also set an environment variable to specify the maximum return value, for example, to put it in your R profile. All right. So much for the first three problems. And the fourth one is detect course does not give the number of allowed cores. So what can that mean? And we talk about different situations here. The first situation is you're using it on a personal computer. As developers, we don't know how many cores the user wishes to set aside. So it's better practice to not make an assumption for the user, but rather to let the user decide on how many cores to use for which purpose. Um, just imagine that the user start several R sessions to run your code. And if then each R session uses detect cores, then you may, um, you may put too much work load on your machine and exceed 100% of capacity. So you can imagine easily that this becomes very inefficient very quickly. So that's the situation for a personal computer. Detect cores may be problematic then. On a shared computer, it's even worse. It can slow down everything for all the users. So not only yourself suffer from that, but many other users possibly as well. The user causing the problem may not be aware of it. He just ran your code or maybe used your R package. Um, and this situation may be hard to troubleshoot. So again, the solution would be to use the available course function from the parallel package. And note that here, a user or also a system administrator can limit the default number of CPU cores. So again, here you can set an environment variable that I've written here. Available cores fallback. Right, so third situation where detect cores does not give the number of allowed cores is on a shared compute cluster with many machines. So high performance compute clusters, HPC in short, use job schedulers. So here's a code example from SLURM. SLURM stands for Simple Linux Utility for Research Management, Resource Management, sorry. You see that on the bottom of the slide. Um, so you see that here in the call, in the code for the job scheduler, the number of CPUs is specified and also a memory limit is specified. 
and then the script shall be run with these settings. But detect course does not respect these settings. So that's again problematic. And again, available course from the parallel packages um, behaves better in this case. It does recognize environment va variables for common high performance compute cluster schedulers. And a number of examples are listed here um, Fujitsu, PGM, SGE. LSF, PBS Torque, and Slurm. So again, available course is a better solution. And lastly, detect course does also not give the number of allowed course when running in a Linux container using C groups, which means control groups. So here, processes get allotted a certain number of cores. So here's an example code running a Docker container and you can specify which CPUs to use. And again, the problem is that the detect course function does not respect the setting. It returns the CPUs that the hardware has and not the CPUs that are specified for this control group. So an example, again, to make it more concrete would be you have a machine with 96 cores and H cores are specified per C group then 96 workers would fight for the resources of eight cores. And again, this becomes very inefficient. And um, side note, this can also happen on the POSIT cloud, which used to be the RStudio cloud, but now RStudio has changed its name to POSIT. So here, um, the tech cores would return more than one where um, on a free plan, at least, um, you only get one core. So again, the available cores function from the parallel package behaves in a better way here. So that was it. A, no, a large number of problems, I think, can be associated with using the um, detect course function. So what does Henrik Bengtsson recommend? Um, he says of himself, he's on the conservative side. So um, his first suggestion is not the available course function, which is, of course, a convenient way of replacing detect course. But um, the best practice, according to Henrik Bengtsson, is to make the default of your code or your package such that the code is run sequentially and that the user can decide on the number of parallel workers to use by overwriting this default. But in any case, don't make detect cores the default that could lead to all the problems that we talked about. If you want to go into more details, there's another article. Um, it's part of the Futureverse website, a collection of packages that use the future framework and there's a dedicated page for the parallel package, so you can check that out. Well, that was it for today. I hope this was useful for you. Let me know in the comments if you've run into any of these problems already, or if you uh, maybe can avoid them now um, after learning about this available course function. All the best for your own projects, for all your computing tasks that you have. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.